going on everybody? Johnny Bannon here with Trepid Technologies and in this video we're going to be going over how to secure access to our iOS systems, essentially meaning how do we protect the console port on our routers and switches. We're also going to touch on the VTY lines during the next video when we go over the lab or perform the lab. So essentially what we're talking about here is putting a password on our console port, putting local, creating local credentials, making sure that those local credentials are used when signing in via the console port, then also how to protect our privilege mode meaning when we go from user exec mode to privilege mode that we have a password and then also how to store those passwords via ciphertext now if you've been following this video series if you've been doing our labs you know that the baseline in our gitlab repo already does all this but now we're going to go a little deeper one because it's on the exam objectives and two we're just going to go over a few things about the different commands that we use to make this happen this Video shouldn't be too long, very simple concept. Again, we just got to make sure that we're securing our local iOS, and we do that by just having good password protection or local credentials. We're also going to go over the different privilege levels that come with creating local credentials. Now, for some of you that may be watching this video, you know that we can also protect our access to our iOS using a AAA server, but then it wouldn't be local, right? That AAA server that runs TACX, that does authentication, authorization, and accounting, sits away from the network infrastructure sits at a central point could be in the cloud somewhere so we're just going to go over how to do this locally on your switch or router okay and now let me zoom out my face because we do not need that to learn let's go over the agenda so we're going to go over console authentication we're going to go over securing the local console connection securing privilege mode access configuring local credentials and then configuring the console port for local authentication, meaning just the username and password we make, that's what we're going to use to sign in when we take our blue console cable from our admin computer into the console port and doing out-of-band management on the CLI using a terminal emulation program like PuTTY, uh, Secure CRT, Super PuTTY, TerraTerm, whatever your choice of emulator is. Okay, so console authentication. So Cisco iOS devices out of the box can be managed uh, via their CLI by using a console port. That connection is console port to computer. And then this rollover connection here being plugged into the console port on the actual switch or router. Here's just a quick example of like an old catalyst switch, what it looks like. It could be on the front. It could be on the back. It all just depends on what Cisco device we're talking about. You notice this console port too is USB instead of this uh, serial connection. I think that's like RS-232 connection. It, it really doesn't matter. You can see here we can use the rollover cable or this micro USB connection here. It just all depends on the platform. So by default, that console access is open and does not require any authentication. So a Cisco device out of the box, you can just plug in the console port, turn on PuTTY or Secure CRT, and straight console in without any authentication. So we're going to make sure that we put some authentication on that console port and on our privilege level access. So securing local management connections. To secure the local connection to an iOS device, you must implement local access control. So several different ways to do this. One, we can set an enable password, which means when we jump from user exec mode to privilege mode with the enable command, that we need a password to access that. We can create local credentials and then use those local credentials to sign in when we plug in our console port for console port management. We can also set a password on the console port that isn't using the local credentials we created, just a straight up password. So privilege mode access. So how do we configure access uh, on the privilege mode or how do we protect access getting into privilege mode? So right here, you can see here we can type in enable password and then our password here. And then that sets a password when we're jumping from user mode to privilege mode. But as you can see, by doing that, it stores the password in our running config. So here we just typed in show run in plain text. So we don't want that. So a couple of different things we can do. One, we can use a command called service password encryption and that is going to encrypt all the plain text passwords in our running config that are uh turn them into ciphertext 
But that encryption is very weak and very easy to crack, and I'll actually show you that during our lab. Or we can do this, enable secret, and then that will turn our plain text into cipher text here, and that encryption is not easy to crack, okay? It's much more secure and a much better way to protect our passwords. So as you see here, after configuring those commands, when we jump from user mode into privilege mode, it makes us put a password in, and the password never shows up, just like in a lot of Unix devices, Linux devices, the password's not going to be visible. Once we input that password, it does bring us into privilege mode. All right, setting up local credentials. So this command is very simple. It's just username, then the username, then password, then the password. So same as when we did our enable password, it's going to store this in plain text. If we want to store it as ciphertext, we're going to use that keyword secret again. And you can see here that we need to, if we want the same username and password, we'll have to know this out and then set it again. If we want to use the same exact credentials, just storing it as ciphertext instead. And again, we'll cover that in our lab. Another thing we can do is set permissions on our local credentials. So by default, we have privilege level one, excuse me, zero, one, and 15. And then we also have one through 15, or really zero through 15, that can be used when we're doing more uh, complex access control, like using a TACX server, we'll have 16 different privilege levels we can use. When we set these local credentials to privilege level 15, that's going to give us the highest level of permissions, and that's going to allow us to immediately log in to privilege mode, not user exec mode, when we apply this on the console port. So when we apply local credential authentication on the console port. So now configuring this console port. So as you can see here, we type in line console zero to bring us into the sub configuration mode for that console port. And then we type in the command login local. And when we do that, we're telling the console port to, hey, log when someone wants to do out of band management and log in to our CLI to access our shell via the console port, our console connection. They have to log in using the local credentials that we set on the switch or router itself. And then down here, you can see what that looks like. So here we connected via console port and then we had to input a username and password. And then we got access straight into privilege mode. Because we put that local credentials as privilege level 15. I think I misspelled privilege there, but uh, you understand the point. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be it for the lecture portion. Join us in the next video when we go over the lab. And if you're in the military and your unit or organization want to have in-person training and want us to come out and train you, we bring all the lab equipment, Raspberry Pis, GeoLinet, travel routers, a bunch of different swag and gear, fully sandbox lab environment using EVNG. Please hit us up. Look at that link in the description. Look at our email in the description below and try to get us out for some in-person training. If you're in the army and your unit doesn't send you to boot camps, we're also on the Army Ignited program. Yes, you get four grand a year, not just for tuition, also for credentialing assistance as an army active duty, reserve, or National Guard soldier. And we are a vendor on there, meaning... You can have the Army pay to come to one of our live virtual training courses and get lifetime access to our practice exams, lab software, our network of professionals, and coming in February 2024, our iOS and Android app with all of our material. So if you're interested in that, please hit us up, like and subscribe, and please share this video. Thank you for viewing.